Hello Titaneers and welcome back to another COT related video. Sorry for my long absence, but if you guys were able to see my discussion updates on my channel, you would have saw that I was actually in the middle of working on visual aids to go along with this video. I do uh, want to stress that this more than likely will turn out to be a two-part video given the fact of how much information will be going into creating or even explaining um, the finest details regarding archetypes and powers. I also want to stress that because of this large amount of information that I had to compile and work together into a slideshow, I hope that I do my best to explain it, and if anyone has any questions, please leave a comment or message me directly with a question, and I will try to get back to you as soon, as soon as I can. Anyways, on to the main point, of the, on to the um, start of the video. And that, now the first thing we will be talking about here is archetypes. What are archetypes exactly? Simple. Archetypes are basically the defining role of your character. Um, these are very, the terms are very universal amongst MMOs. You have your tanks, your ranged um, characters, your melee or DPS characters, the support characters, crowd control, controllers, um, and the final one being pets. Now on the screen here, you will be able to see these are the list of archetypes that will be available in City of Titans. However, do make a note that one that the ones that have a star next to them will not be expected for launch. And you'll also find that there are what I will call subclasses or specifications. These specifications basically think of them as your secondary uh, power set. So an example being, first one up here being Stalwart. Stalwart will be your primary power set. And mm -hmm, since Stalwart, what that basically will be is you pick what is called a protection power. Again, all this I will explain later in the video, so no need to worry about that just yet. But you will pick your primary power, and then after stall, you pick um, Stalwart as your um, archetype. Then you go into either Bastion or Bulwark or Centurion. Now, um, since Bastion and Centurion will not be available at launch, you will only be able to go into Bulwark, and Bulwark will be a melee power set. But again, I'll go on. I'll stress more about that later, or not even later, but soon. But these are just the confirmed list of archetypes that will be available at launch. Those that have a star next to them will not have a will not be available at launch at the start of the game. Now for the specifications, or as I like to call them, subclasses. Now, um, as you can see here, here I have designed um, some charts that it will help me better explain what it is and how these um, specifications will work. So, um, now let me try to. Put together a scenario you log in the city of titans and you are greeted with the character creation screen you want to choose let's say okay let's say you like playing as a tank all right so you go into stalwart stalwart is your tank um, archetype but then from there you choose between three different subclasses bastion which would be you which would mean your secondary um which would mean your secondary area uh, sub um, power set will be either will be um assault which is melee or range damage this will mean that you will play as a tank character whose primary power set will be defense based which means you will be able to take onslaught large onslaught amount of damage and be able to mitigate it in the best way um, possible while also having a subclass which will allow you to have a serve as a melee or range character and or range character. Again, I can't stress on this too much because those that, that subclass um, won't be available in game. So until then, you will go into Bulwark, which is melee damage. And yeah, so Stalwart, you pick a protection power. Um, I also have charts laid out for what the, well, are the choices of protection powers you'll be able to choose from as well as um, melee powers to go along with them, since for Stalwart you would be playing as someone whose primary power set will be protection based, with a secondary power set being melee. Ranger, similar similar deal, okay? 
I put healing here, but that's primarily because I forgot to um, actually change that a little bit. Support doesn't strictly mean healing. This basically means group support. You can either buff your um, friends or allies with certain attack um, bonuses and either debuff um, enemy groups with debuffs that will make them weaker and easier to succumb to your attacks. Also, um, I have put here that um, manipulation is I is also a class that will not be available in Champion. Oh, not Champion. City of Titans. Uh, that will not be available in um, City of Titans. But when it is to be available, it is aimed to be a control slash su and support um, power set, which will mean that you will have crowd controlling abilities with group um, or group support powers as well. But again, since it's not ready to, that uh, won't be available at launch, I won't stress on those too much. We are only going to be focusing on protection powers, melee powers, support powers, uh, and I, this is several more, and now I'm blanking on them. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, crowd control. All right, yeah. Basically, all the other ones that are not assault, manipulation, and, uh, and manipulation. So, next pow, next, um, next charts, a couple charts here. We have Enforcer. Now, the Enforcer is the opposite of Stalwart, where Stalwart you pick a protection power first, then a melee power. Enforcer, you are doing the opposite by way of hit, getting a melee power first, and then you go into a protection power set. Now, now I will explain all of these in the next couple slides to come up soon. Actually, the next one right after this. So, um, be ready. I will try to explain these to the best I can. But yes. So, if you pick Enforcer or Guardian, Operator or Commander. Commander that's going to be a pet-centric um, uh, archetype that's not going to be available for launch yet. I believe the MWM team is still working on the overall mechanics for how pets are to be handled. But until then, that won't be available in game yet. But... Yes, you pick, but I hope this is, I am I know I'm stuttering quite a lot here, but this is because I'm trying to do this and explain this to the best of my ability. What, but yes, what you basically do in City of Titans is, you go, you log into the character creation screen, you pick your archetype. Your archetype predetermines what your primary power set is to be. You just choose what kind of primary power um, that you want to do, roll it. So, if you're the type of person who likes to roll as a melee character, then okay. Chances are you may want to play as an enforcer character. And as an enforcer, you, because the only subclass available at the time will be Gladiator, you will pick a protection power. Protection powers are defensive powers that will allow you to mitigate damage in the best way um, you see fit. And you will also be able to form and create your own types of play style that you feel most comfortable with instead of playing as one that is kind of predetermined, pre-made, and universal for everybody you come across in the game. So I hope that makes sense. Because now we're getting into the nitty gritty here. Protection. As I stated several times before, protection are your the, um, defensive power sets. You will be able to choose from either Atrophic Aura, Grit, and Vulnerability, Solid Form, or Super Agility. Atrophic Aura is like I've put in parentheses here. You debuff, it's a debuff slash damage over time power set. So basically, if you rolled as a tank with Atrophic Aura, or you rolled as an Enforcer with a Atrophic Aura as your secondary power set, this would be how you go around um, beating a bad guy. You'd be I imagine that there are some powers that are active, meaning that you have to activate them manually by press of a keybind, and then I am sure that there are other forms of um, powers within Trophic Aura that, uh, that are passive, meaning you don't have to do anything. The damage kind of just, just starts happening to the enemy targets if they are to go near you or anything else. Grit. Um, grit is um, aspiring to be a healing slash regeneration power set. Now I know I'm, I, I'm, I am pretty much reading right off of the charts here, but these are because these are mental notes for me, as well as they help me um, think of a description and how to explain these power sets 
because if you are to go on the City of Titans webpage, go on to characters, I believe, and click on power sets and go underneath protection, you will be able to find um, an example, a list of, of um, these powers that I have listed here with at least two um, example powers that they've listed on there. But again, this is me trying to explain it to the best of my ability because not a lot of information has been released regarding how certain power sets will work, but just basic descriptions on what to expect come the game's launch, or at the very least when they come out with their character creator. But healing regeneration, that's basically as exactly as it sounds. I guess it's pretty much going to be your Wolverine sort of power set, where where you're gonna be focused more on self-healing, healing and regeneration, as opposed to having the group healer going around and healing you manually. Then there is invulnerability. Invulnerability is your damage resilience power set. Now there is one big downside to invulnerability, which is due to it being a damage resilience power set, you will not have, I think there is going to be a very minimal healing that will come within the power set itself because the overall function with the invulnerability is to be uh, resilient to all types of, all if not most types of damage. So as a result, you will not have a lot of healing to go for two. Solid form is a defensive power set. I couldn't think of a better way to describe this because the, because the overall description of it basically said you're more yeah, you're more ongoing when it comes to a fight. You're the type to basically shrug off damage, damage and keep fighting. I guess in a sense it's sort of similar to invulnerability, but it's not necessarily damage resilience, it's more like damage tolerance, self it. Where your character, unlike someone, a user of invulnerability, is resilient to most types of damage, your character gets hit by it, but they are the type to just push past the onslaught of attack that they are probably being bombarded with. And then there's super agility, which I aim to get my main hero when I um, play City of Titans on release. Super agility is your dodge evasion power set. And if I remember correctly, dodge and evasion, how it's going to be working is you are given a defensive benefit, I believe, upon a successful dodge. That's, that's, I think I'm remembering it correctly. Super agility, you are given defensive benefits whenever you successfully dodge an attack. Now, uh, like, like in vulnerability, it will not be coming with a lot of healing powers within it because of the main primary function of how you're an agility, super agility user. You are supposed to be evading damage as opposed to taking damage. So, but there will be other powers to come within super agility that will allow you to manage um, deadly attacks dealt against you because one of the other downsides of super agility is the fact that when you are to be hit, the damage you sustain is going to be detrimental and it's going to be very hard hitting. But there will come other powers within the super agility power set that will help you mitigate the damage in, in ways that will keep you from dying. Melee power sets. These are these are the powers you will be choosing from if you are a stalwart or enforcer archetype. And so you will choose between fighting powers, kinetic melee, massive melee, super strength, and tactical combat. Fighting prowess is all about defense and offense. So you gain a stack of defense on every successful offensive attack you deal against your um, targets. And excuse me. Mm, I hope, I hope the auto didn't catch that. Uh, from what the devs said, I believe they said this, Fighting Prowess works better when used in unison with Super Agility if you are to be a stalwart or enforcer. The reason for this is because, well, think about it, on every successful offensive attack you deal, you gain, gain a measure of defense. So that's going to help you very much in the ways of survival. All right, It's all about keeping you on your toes and making sure you and keeping you from, you know, dying in the middle of the um, fight, especially when you're working in groups. Kinetic melee, debuff, and self-buffs. Now, if I remember correctly, the description for this read as kinetic melee is all about your offensive attacks dealing debuffs against enemies, in which in turn buffs you 
It doesn't say if it's defensively or offensively, but you gain some sort of self buff even when when um attacking um enemy targets. Massive melee is an area of effect centric power set. That's what AOE stands for. So it's all about hitting all the targets in one central location. And I think this is probably going to be a very fun power to play around with if you are to choose it. Because one of the big things made ma melee power sets always tend to suffer from, at least sometimes, is the way of AoE. Um, I'm familiar with quite a few different um, games that are not, that are blanking on that I'm blanking on right at this moment. But melee usually tends to suffer when it comes to AoE. Usually. Because, well, it's not like a ranged power set. Ranged power sets usually come in an array of different pow um, powers. There's your single targets, there's your AoEs, there's your, um, I forget what the other one is. PB AoE? I don't know. Point blank area of effect, I believe it's called. But, yeah, I imagine this is going to be good for those people who want to play as a melee character, but they don't want to sacrifice area of effect. So, that is going to be your power set if you're that type of player. Super Strength. Super Strength, I would like to call the Hulk power set, I guess. It's all about might and doing knocks against enemies. Now, if this is anything like how champions like to do their knocks where you can send people flying several meters away, then, yeah, that's gonna be a kind of a pain, but that's at least the, the um, central theme of Super Strength. It's gonna be all about might and um, not themed um, powers, which I imagine will probably um, be very thematic when used alongside of invulnerability, if you are to choose that as your protection power. Then there's tactical combat, which is all about setting up combo effects, and, and by setting up these combos, you have a greater offensive chance or rate, I believe. Hmm. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's all about setting up um, combos, more or less. Now, I'm not sure, I'm not very aware of many MMOs that have used things similar to this in any way, but that's the basic overall description of it, is setting up combos, and and having greater, off it's kind of hard to explain, but it's, but yes, it's, again, a lot of information is very bleak and dull at the moment, so I can't go too much into detail, but that's the overall of that power set as well. Then we are into our range and support power sets. So, range, uh, we are given Atrophic Blast, Force Blast, Lethality, Psychic Blast, and Vampiric Blast. Now, I, I'm probably not gonna go through, like, go through each and every one of these, uh, piece by piece, but just the ones that are probably the most relevant. So, Atrophic Blast is your range damage over times. Force Blast is your knock themed, your range themed knockback attacks. Lethality is debuff centric. And Psychic Blast is controller debuff. And Vampiric is your self healing uh, power set. Which I think also may be effective towards groups as well. You can use Vampiric Blast as a way to heal yourself or even others as well. But I think it's primarily self heal. Because you don't want this to. Uh, overlap or make the powers over in the support power sets be be um just forgetful. So um, barrier generation and the support tree. Um, you get you. It's all about shielding the um your group. All right. So we all we all need um that one member on a team who has to be invisible one. They have to be the one that gives us the shields and keeps us pretty protected when faced with a bunch of different uh, attacks that are hitting all of us all at the same time. All right, just a, yeah. Whoever rolls the barrier generation is going to be just as important as a healer role because they're going to be all about um, shielding not just the group but even probably suspending the enemies in force fields as well, or, or probably even doing slight debuffs, but. These debuffs will not be on the same extent as what you see down here with Vampiric Emanation, which is all about enemy debuffs and buffing the group in turn. Alright. 
strategies, group centric offensive uh, buffs. So anyone who rolls that, they are going to they are they are going to be buffing the offensive chances and capabilities of the group. Uh, preservation that is going to be I think a global buff debuff power set that affects um, either the whole group or um, or just the individual who's using this power set and debuff enemy targets as well. And then there's devices which is your crowd control which is basically using anything from robots to turrets or anything to take out large waves of enemies, the lackeys, the henchmen, whatever, as a way to quickly clear the room and proceed further and get to that boss that we're trying to get to. And then finally, I believe this is the last one, which is control power sets. The control power sets are, again, your crowd control. So there's force control, gravity control, illusions, power control, and psychic control. Force control is based around movement hindrance, which is basically where you are able to suspend the movement of enemies and targets, making either nailing them to the ground or rooting them in place so that they can't move as much or too much. Uh, I imagine this will also be very important for those type of enemies that are flying. Gravity manipulation, this is single target based, is pretty much where you're able to lock your sights on one individual and either deal offensive damage to them or even even just deal again small debuffs to them without being a debuff centric power set illusions these are enemy debuffs this is probably gonna be the most fun for those who love um, playing around with the whole psychic illusion aspect of certain characters this is gonna be where you are able to turn the enemy AI on uh, psychic or physical or supposed physical manifestations that will cause them to redirect attention from the group and onto it causing them to more or less just just uh what's the word I'm, i keep blanking on this stuff today uh which is basically going to cause them to just turn their sights on the illusion that your character or your player or group member set up and causing the fire on them of course, this is something that's only going to last for a couple seconds at a time before the illusion probably disappears and it locks sex back on you again. Power control is all about... Now, every most video games have what is their version of an energy bar. Um, City of Titans, I believe their energy bar is going to be called power. And this is going to be all about draining the power or, and for the rest of the, or at least for the remaining half of this video, I will be calling energy and this is going to be all about depleting it so that they can't use their powers or weapons or abilities against you. Now, of course, um, when it comes to bosses, this may be a little harder because, you know, they're boss. Right? They're not supposed to be easy to beat. But you can make it easier, them easier to fight against if you take down their, uh, their ability to use certain attacks. So if you deplete their energy, or better yet, absorb it, you know, you're going to make the job a little bit easier because you're going to essentially be locking out their powers for a short time. Or in other words, think of those who use power control as road from the X-Men. Alright, it's just that instead of taking people's powers, you're taking their ability to use certain powers against your group. And then finally, there's psychic control, which is single target offensive power sets. That's it. And now we are going to be going into archetype masteries. Now, masteries, from what I remember, is you will be, be able to pick between three masteries, and I think you should pick the first one at level six, I believe? Uh, you picked the first one at level six, I have to check this information. Uh, the second one at level 15. Uh, let me, okay, no, all right, no. You picked your first um, archetype mastery at level five, then 15, and then 25 rounding it up to a total of three mastery slots that's by the time you hit the level cap of 50. so examples here are star wars if you roll star wars on market type you will pick between either battle leader bruiser living target protector or ruggedness all right and again you guys i'm i don't want to just read the descriptions if you guys can see it it, uh, you can read it for yourselves. I can even put in the link in where I got my information so you guys can read through it as well. 
but I can't explain too much of this because of, well, again, these are just basic um, names with descriptions, and I can't exactly provide exact scenarios on how these will work, but this is the list of masteries for those who roll a tank archetype. And again here, Enforcer, you, these are the um, lists of uh, masteries you will choose from. I mean, if you roll the Enforcer archetype, there's Ranger. Just gonna give you guys a minute to read through that. Yep. Um, Guardian. And then I think it's the final one, Operator. But yes, um, the basic rundown without having to go through each individual thing and having to explain it in depth. Uh, basically, if you choose a mastery, the mastery is gonna be, well, uh, allowing you to basically have yourself be honed or practiced in a specific category of uh, a specific category of how you use your powers, whether it be you're more skilled in using uh, single target attacks or AoEs, or you're more a healer centric um, character, or you are to be a more support character that deals with debuffing enemy targets, or and basically, if you roll. If whatever master you choose from, you're basically rounding out the final aspects of your character and kind of determining what kind of character are you going to be. And I think what's best is about having at least five different uh, masters is that you can basically make you can basically make a character the exact same way you made your main or first hero in City of Titans, but it'll still be different because each mastery has a different uh, functioning to it. So I think that's even is the more fun part as well. And then there is, this is the last slide, build slots and respects. Now, separate build slots will actually be earned through character progression, which is, of course, leveling up. Build slots will be, will use the same primary set, which means if you chose, um, or in this case, um, Enforcer Master, um, the Enforcer Archetype, that means you chose from either Fighting Prowess, Tactical Combat, Massive Melee, Kinetic Melee, and Super Strength. You will not be able to change that primary power set. That is your primary power set. You are unable to change it. However, these build slots can and will be able to use a secondary power set, mastery powers, and tertiary powers. So basically think of it as each build slot, while you are unable to change the first power, the primary power set, that kind of, because like, if you had a different build slot that allows you to place a different archetype, then it's like, you're basically playing as like three different characters or versions of your character on one character slot. That's not going to happen. Your primary power set is what determines what kind of archetype you are, but the secondary power set is kind of helps you give, it doesn't make you just a cookie cutter character. You're not just going to be a cookie cutter tank, a um, DPS or range character. The secondary power set also gives your character a little bit more personality by way of allowing you to explore different power sets that's without having to make like multiple different heroes and having to explore these um, set power sets, if that makes sense. Oh, and tertiary power, ter tertiary powers, I hate this first one, which that's basically your third power set. I didn't explore that in this video because that is a, like that is a discussion that hasn't been harped on too much, but more or less that's just a third power set you'll be able to choose from, and if I remember correctly, I know I keep saying if I remember correctly, but that's because a lot of the information kind of blanks. I blank on so much, but um, tertiary powers are something that will be available at launch. But I think it's still being decided upon whether that can be a that can it if not will be a subscriber exclusive uh, function or feature that'll be provided to those that subscribe to the game by way of membership. But yes, so build slots, that's basically the overall functioning of them. They use the same primary power sets that you chose when you first made your character, but they will use a sec a different secondary power set and mastery powers, or ter tertiary um, powers, which is third power set. And there will also be a limit on how quickly you can change between builds, but the end result will be you will have two, um, op end up with two optional alternative builds by the time you're done leveling your character. As for respects, this same rule applies, applies 
um, you won't be able to change your primary power set, only your secondary power sets, augment slots, 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 and etc. Augment slots I will actually be exploring in the next video, which is augments and refinements, which is the game's version of crafting. Because as it stands right now at the moment, moment, uh, and not even at the moment, this is actually been outright confirmed that there will not be gear in City of Titans whatsoever. Because one of the big um, things that gets harped on so much regarding MMOs is probably how what's what's harped on so much about MMOs is probably how gear is handled. You go throughout the, the game, leveling your character, being having so much different gear thrown in your face that you not only have to pick up, wear, and gain some kind of stat benefits from, but also have to modify them uh, just so you can have an increased um, offensive or defensive or anything um, benefits given to your character, and that's the thing that really sucks. City Titans is eliminating gear by way of having you modify your powers. It's a superhero MMO. It's not going to be your typical fantasy or sci-fi MMO where you get gear and you start modding and crafting different from there so if it's a superhero MMO if it's a superhero MMO the primary goal is to get you to focus on your powers because that is what you are getting today you're going to be a superhero or villain or anti-hero anti villain anti whatever you choose to be in this game and they want you to focus on your powers because that's one of the key things that's is door too much about you is their powers and abilities and that's what they want you to focus on so in my next video, I will be doing and exploring augments and refinements. I am also in the midst of doing a visual visual aids for this as well, for that as well. I also, also, if this video didn't help at all, at all whatsoever, I am planning on, not even planning, but I will actually have a link in the description to this personal slide so that you can refer to, actually. So, so yes, you actually have a gift from me to you, and I hope you guys can ex can understand it. I tried to make it in the best way I see fit, Be but yes, this is me just trying to compile a bunch of information that I read up on, found, and made sure I read in between the lines of very well to fit into the slideshow for you guys to refer to personally. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. I will try to explain them to the best I can. But until then, I will be signing off for now with my next video coming in. Mm, I don't know how long it may take me because I still need to finish everything. But I will definitely be getting this video up and up to you guys very soon. I wish you all a good day and to fly free and also in 2018 to answer the call. All right. So this is Glitch, your host Glitch, signing off for now.